kind reminder of that. And so without further ado, I'll introduce our next speaker here. Uh, so Siddharth, hello, hello. Hey. Hey, hello, hello. Uh, so yeah, well, you're going to teach us how to use Dribblit, which is amazing. So um, yeah, Fingers crossed. I will be, you know, talking too much because I will let you talk. I will let you uh, <laughs> tell us. So I'm going to put your presentation on the screen and then you can start. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh Glad to have uh, everyone here and be here. So yeah, so Streamlit is something that I've worked a bit on in the past year. So I would love to talk about it. And pajama is a great occasion for it. And I am in my I am in my pajamas. So I am in the spirit of pajamas already. So as you can see, the title is Streamlit to build and deploy apps like a data scientist. So let's just get on with it. Let's just get started. So first of all, who am I? I am Siddharth Gupta. And at the rate said Gupta234 on internet. So if you just Google it, you will get thousands of spam accounts that I might have created using this username. And I am currently pursuing a cognitive science master's at IIT Delhi. And I also have a YouTube channel on college information in India about higher education. And my hobbies include music, chess, football, and guess what? Sleeping. <laughs> and I have recently interned as well in Potsdam University. So it's been going uh cool till now and so so let's come back to the business part of it so first of all what is streamlit we'll discuss that and then we'll just deep we'll just take a deep dive into the different aspects of streamlit and we'll have a hands on discussion of how to come up with these different features starting from installation and the features that come after it one after another then we will uh, will have a will will build a streamlit app and i have it already in uh, readiness but we will sort of go through the elements that have made it possible after learning all these initial parts and then i will show you some other examples of my streamlit projects and at the end of the day we'll see if we can also uh, learn about how to deploy these apps maybe time won't allow but we'll try our best that's what we can do right so streamlit what is streamlit so streamlit uh, is an open source python library and it makes it very easy to make beautiful apps and deploy it on the internet. So the problem with the other frameworks is that it might come a bit difficult for someone who, who is more into data science and not into web development. So that's when other streamlets really come in, comes into picture. So uh, you, you are a very good data analyst, data scientist, but you don't know uh, web development. So what will you do? Give up? No, you'll learn streamlet. So because, because it is very friendly and it is Python first. So if you are into data science, then you already have some idea of what Streamlit is going to be about because it is based on Python. And then you can also deploy it and share in just no time whatsoever. And this is an example that we'll build at the end of it. And uh, as you can see that it is also hosted on Heroku that shows that we can actually deploy it quite easily. And then the code is also available for you to go through. So understanding, let's try to understand the different features of it. First of all, installation and setting up. So again, you can just uh, clone that repository of XKCD fetcher and just get started with it. And then the usual dry, uh, the usual run of the mill uh, things that you do, which is to create a Conda environment, activate the environment, install pip, and then install pip requirements file, which just contain two through three libraries, including Streamlit, Pandas, and NumPy. So here you can see the bare bones of uh, Streamlit, how it starts. So you just import the libraries that are relevant to your code, including Streamlit. And then what you do is something called set page configuration. So you give some basic idea of uh, what, your what your page is, uh, meta information is going to be about. So what will be the page title of it? How should the icon look like? What should be the layout like? And what should be the status of the initial sidebar? So your layout could be wide and it could be centered. So there are two uh, primary layout. So in wide, you have the options of breaking down the page into different columns. But in case of center, you are only allowed one column. So here, uh, I'll, I'll go through the code as well in a while. So you, you create this file, you name it app.py and you have created the smallest possible streamlit program. And here, here you can see what I did here uh, is, uh, is this, this is the bare bone. This is, this is what happens when you run this particular piece of code. So here you can see, this is the structure that we have. I have cheated a bit. I've added NumPy library also, but uh, that hardly makes a difference. So here you can see that, uh, here you can see 
that this is the basic bare bone of a streamlit program a streamlit application this is the bare bone so what you need to do is you need a command to run it so after creating this smallest piece of code in app.py you just need to run the command streamlit run streamlit run and the name of the script which is app.py in our case so what it does it sets up a server it sets up a local host and then you can just simply go to uh, your your, your local host link and you can see that we have successfully launched a streamlit application which is nothing at this point of time now here what you can do is uh, we will go in the next slide so we'll just build one on one the concepts so here you can see in this slide what is happening is now we are going to the columns part of it so now so as you can see that here what we did is we gave our layout as white and white gives us multiple columns now what you can do is you can divide this whole page into different columns column one, column two, column three, and so on. And then you can decide on which, uh, what would be the ratio of these columns length. So C1, C2, C3, one, two, one. So that means that the page will be divided into one is to two is to one ratio. And then the column would be uh, of that ratio length. And then you can see that if we sort of run this small structure, then you can see that hello, pyjamas world is here to stay. And pyjama, you can see that it is taking uh, a two two part of a two out of four parts of the page and hello and world are taking one each. So here you can see here in our code, uh, if we if we let's just quickly go to our code here. What we need to do is we just need to sort of uh, uncomment it, save it, and here let's see what is happening. So what is happening is we have we have uh, come up with this idea that okay we can divide the page into number of columns, but then we need to denote the column as well. So we saved it as C one, C two, and C three. And here with C1, so now what I'm saying to Streamlit is that, okay, use C1 and on C1, which is the first column, uh, apply this thing. So st.write, so you need to write hello on this C1 column. On C2 column, now we have come to the second column. What you have to do is print pajamas. And on C3 column, you have to write world. So here for, for writing, there is a function called st.write, which just simply puts uh, so if we, if we just refresh it, you can see that it just simply writes it on the page. And now here you might think that, okay, pajamas is looking a bit off. So what you can do? So what you can do is streamlit is so great that is allow, that it allows markdown as well. So you can just simply use the markdown and you can just simply, uh, you can just align it at center and it will look slightly in the center. So here, if you refresh it, you can see that. It is it is in center of the page. It it is not looking as center as it should be because because the world is again on the left left aligned and this is also left aligned. But trust me, this is at the center of the page. So this is how the columns will come into picture. So so how easy it becomes that now you just have to do is uh, set up these columns and then you have to just with C one you have to just continuously write on that particular column and then everything will come uh, one below the other on that particular column. So now let's just uncomment it and let's explore the next part. So next part we have is, so in the next part we have is containers. So what are containers? In, in HTML, we have divs. Here we have containers. So now on column level also, we can make sub subgroups of elements. And that is what a container is. So a container is a subgroup of elements where you will, you will realize where it will come handy. But at this moment, I think it, it sort of helps you modularize your code and uh, it helps you to understand it better and crisper. So here uh, in the, in the container side, let's see what you can do. So uh, in the container side yeah, here, if I do again, uncomment it and you just need to refresh it after setting a server, you just need to refresh it. And now you can see uh, XKD comic fetcher, get one random comic is coming here. Why it is happening? Because C, C1, C2, 1 is to 2. So we are dividing the page into two halves of 1 is to 2 ratio and then C1 and C2 respectively. So now what we are doing is we are saying that use this container, use this container and use this container on C1 column and then do this. So, so on C1 column, you can see some activity happening, taking place. And next part is actually very interesting. It shows us uh, how powerful uh, how powerful it can be to have different types of text displays on our disposal. So here you can see uh, if I if I talk about the text display options. So here if I uncomment it, you can see what what a range of variety we have available to our 
disposal and we have markdown uh, definitely as we discussed earlier there is title there is header there is subheader there is caption code so you can also have that code like printing on your on your screen as well uh, and then text to the general text and then latex as well latex so uh, is, isn't this cool that you are able to render latex as well through streamlit so here you can see that uh, markdown this is how markdown looks because i made it italic this is how title text looks this is how header looks and you can see that the the height of it and width of it goes down depending on the title header and subheader uh, type of text and here the caption is and you see the code part looks so 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 beautiful you know i just print we are having fun in pajamas we are having fun in pajamas and different ways we are sort of echoing that sentiment and here in the latex part you can see that how uh, how beautifully it sort of changes uh, bare uh, latex to a uh a, a good output a good mathematical output so 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 this is again a very powerful thing that you are able to display such a range of variety of text uh on on uh, your server on your streamlit server and then again <clears throat> there's a lot of input widgets that are also available so you have buttons you have text input you have uh, radio buttons and so on so the list is on and on but to understand a bit so here i have just put a uh, some exam a couple of examples so i'll again just uncomment it so just so we can focus on one thing at a time and learn that particular aspect of uh, the library so here if i put on input widget here you can see uh, here if i refresh it now you can see that there are two Uh, examples given here one is the button and one is the text input so if i press this you can see that uh, the text changes to to button pressed and if i enter a name here i am all pajamas today so i'll write my name as pajamas so you can see that uh, the input that was taken from the text box has been used in the printing here as uh, in a way so you, here you can see what is happening here now let's see so if this event gets triggered if the if st dot button the button uh which here the text is written which text would be written on button here it is written press so if that gets clicked so this bool will become true whenever this bool becomes true you have to write button pressed so that's why if i refresh it once again you can see if i press it it changes to button pressed earlier uh, and if that if that doesn't happen then button never pressed so that's why initial stage we have button never pressed but then when we give this input that changes the bool and then now it presents as button pressed and now here you can see uh, the input text is so so relevant because now you want someone to enter something and then you want to use that data to come up with uh, some calculations that you might need so here you can uh, so here when i ask someone someone their name they enter their name and then it gets get saved as text underscore input and then we sort of write it again uh, as you can see that your name is and then the text input gets printed so here you can again see that if i write pajamas it will get printed so this is this is a very small uh, demonstration of uh, the kind of uh, tools that are available in streamlit so now so this is input widget and it will come a bit handy when we talk about a little project that we made so if i just comment it as well so again again one more beautiful cheese about uh, uh, sorry yeah so again one more very relevant thing with streamlit is uh, that it can print uh, chart elements pretty well so if, uh, so it has its own it has its own chart library and uh, besides its own chart library there is also matplotlib and plotly support so you can use matplotlib and plotly right off the bat and streamlit will render it as well so here you can see one example one small example of streamlit's bar chart so here you can see that uh, we sort we are sort of uh, creating a data frame and uh, and passing and sort of saving a data frame just just as is with the two columns and then we try to plot it as a bar chart and here you can see if i sort of refresh it here you can see that uh, bar chart has been produced depending on the data frame values that were there so this uh, this is again a very powerful thing and lastly there is also media so you can just use images uh, videos and audios and you can show them as well on your streamlit app so here you can see uh, i'll just uncomment it and, and i've given an image link 
So here, if I refresh it, ah, eh, the image comes, and I, as I said, I'm all pajamas today. So the image comes of the pajamas logo. So here, you can just uh, use st dot video, st dot audio, and uh, uh, this one, yeah. So here, you can use uh, st dot uh, uh, audio, st dot video, st dot image, and so on. So sky is the limit. Sky is the limit, and here, uh, you can just uh, use any link here to show the image and. and so on so this is the media part of it now let's try to see what we can do with our initial problem which was the xkcd comic fetcher come on what is that so now we'll try to build this uh, i've already built this but i'll i'll go through the steps once in front of you uh, really quickly so he, this is our data set data set contains of 2496 xkcd images as well as its metadata associated with it so you can see that uh, details of uh, 2496 comics are there in the data set and every every comic is sort of having this meta metadata associated with it so for this particular comic you will have month string num 2496 link uh, some alt text uh, the url and so on so now uh, this is there and and now we'll let's try to see Uh, how we can come up with a a code for it so now whatever we have learned we'll try to sort of set a set a tone for it to use it so first of all we will uh, uncomment this part so here let's see what is happening so first of all streamlet is importing yay that thing we know we know from our uh, earlier part of the lecture and tutorial or talk i don't know what is the right word but uh, so here you can see that panda has been imported and here i created a small function which is pre process so let's see what this pre process is doing just for the sake of completeness so here the pre process is just reading the json file and the, i'm just focusing on the transcript of the text so in this case the transcript is empty but in other cases there is a transcript so i'm i'm relying on just the transcript so it sort of pre processes the transcript part of it and then returns the data uh, frame okay and then there is a model file which is to get images so given text we have to come up with the images so here the uh, the images part is simple we give a data set we give a user input then the user input gets compared with the 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 metadata which is uh, the transcript part of it and depending on the value that is there in the transcript part we get output so if we look for a query like python and if there is a comic which has python in its metadata then it will come out so those are the two functions that we are importing so uh right off the bat c1 c2 now we know what it means we have a we have we have created two containers so now let's see what is going to happen in this function very quickly so here uh, uh we have set a title we have set a header we have set a file name which is the data set file we have pre processed the data we have taken an input from the user and we have taken a num results which is empty at this point so let's just refresh it once uh so here you can see that i can write anything and okay this is working for i mean this thing is working and now in the second column we want to print the images so here we, if i write uh, if i refresh it again if i write python something should come here but it is not coming and why is the case because there is more c2 involved here so first of all uh first of all in first column i i want to write if there is a result for it or not if there is not a result for it then i don't want to write it Uh, then i want to write it that there is no result if there is a result then i want to show the result and now in the second column i will show the result now if i write python something should come so you can see one so i'm showing one out of 10 comics because i cannot show 10 of them so i sort of here randomly select one out of these 10 images so this is what uh, uh, a small program looks like and you can play with this i think this is a very good starting point to get started with streamlit this is a very simple program where given a keyword you look for the you look for you look you look, you look in the metadata to find where this python occurs in the keyword as a keyword in the description and or of alternate text or anything you want to like you like and then we can show one out of 10 images out so this is what uh, this is how easy it is to create a, so this is barely 20 to 30 lines of code and you have a very interesting uh, program here very very interesting program and and i want to give you the breadth of it that uh, what is the possibility of it so you can see some of the examples 
of uh, uh, small projects that i made so one of them is a music playlist uh, generator so here you can see this is also made bits from a streamlit deployed on heroku and here you can see c1 c2 c3 right off the bat and then uh, you just have to select an artist here depending on artist you will have a, a range of songs that they might have sung and you can select the song and you can get the lyrics as well as the billboard rank of the song over the years and then the audio property of the song as well thanks to a spotify data set and then you can and then i also had a uh, uh, recommend a system in the background that can generate a playlist of songs which are similar to this song so now you can just click this and you will have a playlist that is similar to this song so um, i mean this is of course uh, in line with uh, the expectations of uh, streamlit that you can also generate uh, uh, you can also run machine learning models in the background as well so this is this is uh, a little bit about the breadth of uh, this particular library that i wanted to show you and there was this another project which i made which was the essay rater which i made very recently and here here uh, the idea is to rate essays i just used a pickle file to extract uh, uh, the model and here if i write some very cool word maybe i am extremely okay let me correct it i am extremely happy then it will give me a vocabulary score of 1.5 if i give it some lesser word then it will give me a lesser vocabulary so this is again something that i built with streamlight takes me just few minutes half an hour maximum to set it up and deploy it and um, i don't think we have time for discussing deployment i thought that uh, i would focus more on tutorial because uh, because then it will really help you get started for deployment you don't need a lot of things actually you just need to create three files one is the setup file which uh, which tells the streamlit about what kind of theme it wants to have so if you if you see here you can change the theme of it as well so in settings you can change the, the theme of it from light to dark so in the setup in this configuration file you can set uh, the theme of it uh so that it it is same for every user in proc file you just list a command that you want to execute and then there is a requirement file which tells us about which libraries are needed and then you can use uh, heroku to create uh this app uh, i mean to to deploy this app using simple uh uh com two two three commands and last and lastly i just want to say thank you so much to everyone who is listening this who will ever listen to this and uh, to the audience to pajamas to streamlit and the documentation and of course xkcd comics i think you all are the real mvp thank you so much for the time i hope i'm in time thank you it's a really really good talk um so i have a question because i've been listening um yeah. <laughs> what what do you think you know uh, pe people uh, you know the advantage because i know a lot of data scientists they use the flask uh, api and stuff but like so so what what, uh, what do you think uh, you know this is uh, better than flask for example i think uh, i think when it comes to deployment it is very easy so if you if you make a very small uh, scale project then i think this should be like this should be like uh, uh, one of those libraries where you sort of push it once and uh, see if it is working out or not and then if you want to scale it then you can go for uh, uh, frameworks which provide further freedom so here you would have certain functions that you can employ but if you go on flask then you can design your own functions so i think to start with uh, your journey or if you have some idea prototype in mind then i think it's it's better to start with this and then uh, sort of extend it further yes so it depends thing on the use case i guess yes 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 i believe so Yeah, it's cool. I think like well, we we all want to you know learn new stuff and then you know have more options, and that's really cool. Yeah. Thank you for introducing us to to the new you know a slimlit is a new thing if you haven't heard about it. And thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the great talk, and um, I hope you have fun in pajamas. Yeah, um, it's fun, and and I mean I'm I'm available across Twitter and LinkedIn. So if you if you have any ideas with slimlit or anything with regards to uh data analytics or data science so i you can ping me yeah great okay thank you so much and i will let you rest a little bit for now